I'm Yvette Stoffert, the owner of Motley Muse, and I love painting. I've painted this statue for a friend, and I thought I would take a moment to explain and teach you how I did it so that you can get the similar results. Now this statue is made out of concrete. I have used acrylic paint to paint it. Now you'll notice a few things with this. I have painted the Mary so that she is painted. However, I have left the back to be kind of old and have a rustic kind of a look to it. Now what I did first was when I got the statue, I hosed it down with water. I sprayed everything really good. There was some plants that you can see down here that, and a lot of moss that was growing all in the little crevices, tons of moss. So I had to get out a little scrubby and I had to get in there to all the little places and get the moss out, the moss out of all the places. Now when I did that, yes, it did chip some of the paint that originally was on here, but you know, to restore it, we're gonna, what, what can we do, right? So I did have to go and scrub it. I did try to not scrub around here so much where there wasn't any moss growing so I could have the patina um, where you can see some of the concrete through the, uh, coming through the paint. Now, I do not recommend to use oil paint for this. I recommend to use acrylic. Scrub it really good. Allow it to dry completely as much as you possibly can. Then after that, what I chose to do was I worked on things that were far away first in the foreground and then came to the, uh, then I can't, I, excuse me. I started from the background and then I worked my way to the foreground. So the colors I started were, was I painted her shawl blue and then I painted white. And then the things that were the accent colors, such as the silver, and then her, her skin and the hair and, and the lips, I left that towards the end. Now the reason why I did that was because it would make it easier to have the, it makes it easier to have the, the colors go on top of each other so you can get a layering effect and a really sharp lined edge effect by doing that. Um, I used, a, well, I used a, which normally when I'm teaching painting classes, what I consider my large square brush is what I used for this one, but because this piece is larger than what I normally am teaching in my classes, um, I used what would be considered a small square brush. Acrylic uh, paint was used, so because of that, I didn't use natural fibers and hairs in my brush. Um, and then you gotta get in there. You know, you really have to like go into the little crevices and take your time. Now I've got three coats on this, and the reason why is because this statue is outside and it's going to be in the elements and in the weather. So I did go three coats. I did do it over two weekends to allow each coat to fully dry and cure before I did the next coat. Now, notice that this statue is the Mary with the serpent, but at the same time, it's not. Now, the reason why is because copyright infringement. And so the statue has little things that are different than the actual original statue that was created a million years ago. Um, I think the original statue is around 300 years old. So it's a little bit different, but that's because the original people have just copyright. So because of that, you have to use a little bit of artistic license. Now I would recommend going on Google and looking at a lot of different photos so that way you can get your colors right because it is important that every color that is on her has a meaning and a representation of what it is. So please go do some research so that way you can be accurate and true to form to what it is. Um, now I chose to make a decision to leave this gray because to represent the needle, the nails of the cross that went into Jesus. And then the grotto is an old patina look. And then one thing that I also did that you don't have to do, but I think it's a nice touch, and in the Renaissance it was something that they did quite a lot of, I left the some of the original paint from the old, um, the old painting. So this statue is about 150 years old, and the lady that uh, had painted it, uh, the last one that painted it before me, painted it around 30 years ago. And so you can see there was some weathering and to make an homage to her and her art because it was really beautiful but there was weathering happening 
and whatnot. So to pay homage to her, I left the base down here brown, which in the original statue was wood. And so I left her original paint. And you can see right here how there was some cracking in the paint. This is also due to weathering because the, uh, when it's cold and when it's hot, the concrete will expand and contract throughout the season. And so you're gonna get this effect after many years. Now keep in mind, this is being outside and it was under a covered area, so it doesn't have a lot of patina on it, but really after 30 years, that's what you get. And then also I painted this statue about, uh, let's see, it's been about two weeks now and you can see it's sitting under a tree and you can see this debris happening. So every once in a while, come and clean it. You'll see some bugs and whatnot, little things. I noticed that there tends to be a lot of spiders. Now the roses on the side, I chose to paint those because they're also symbolic with meanings of the, ro the rose and when the Virgin Mary had appeared. Now you'll see in the original one that the snake is many different colors but to make it easier on myself I used a liner brush a really skinny tiny pointed brush and I just went ahead and made the snake black because it's the sin and she's stepping on sin she's stepping on Satan this is also the world now in the original there are a bunch of clouds and if you have if you're scared about it just don't worry about the clouds just go ahead and do blue and I mean it gets the point across and the reason why I say this is because look up here if you notice this, this is not original to the original design, but I added it. So you can take a little bit of artistic license just because we kind of, you know, to fudge it and whatnot. Now, I made a decision to make her, um, her skin to be a little olive toned. Now, the reason why is because I have a little Jewish ancestry and you can see that I am not lily white. I do have a little bit of olive tone to my skin and I'm not saying that I'm related to her. But some of my ancestry is Jewish, and so we're not black people, we're not white people. So I would go with an olive tone. Now, if you also notice, the majority of, of Jewish people do not have red hair. They don't have blonde hair. They typically have black curly hair. So I'm making an assumption that she might have had black hair. Now, in the day of time that Mary lived, she did not expose her hair. That's something that they didn't do. However, this original statue, when they made it, they did expose her hair. So I left that. And then, of course, with the veil. Now, originally, when this was retouched up and painted, they had uh, the person who had painted this before me had gotten some blue down in here. And so I did go back and touch that up. But you can see right here how it, you can still, if you, I could see closely here that the blue is kind of popping through the white. So I recommend if that happens, just go ahead and give it an extra little coat to kind of cover it. Uh, when you have a dark color, it's going to take many coats to put a light color on it to clear it up. Now, if you see closely here with her mouth and her eyes, I didn't want to make her look like she was going out to a night clubbing. So what I did was I took a liner brush and I just did a little quick little line for the mouth and the eyes, just one little pass. And notice up close and personal you see all these little flaws all that's going on with the painting especially right here i'm sure you can see there are many different colors of gray now what i did originally was i took a little tiny pen a paint pen and i tried to go because there's a lot of grooves in here that are really pretty and i tried to get in there but it was just so difficult and my skill level wasn't there and it was just Ugh. So I just went ahead and went silver and took artistic license to do that. Now the problem that I had, the mistake that I did, was I seen it a week later and I said, oh no. And so I tried to match the gray. Well during that time I was working in the evening when the sun was going down. And so I wasn't seeing the color for what it really needed to be to get a really nice color match. So that's what happened there. So that needs to be touched up. But you know what? The beauty of this, I can come back and touch this up whenever. And so it's fine. It, it'll be fine. And then later when I have some time and I can, you know, come back and work on it. So if you have little boo-boos while you're painting, don't worry about it. They happen. And then also I want to show you from a distance what this looks like. We see all the little flaws in the painting. But when we step back and we see from a distance, which is what most people are gonna see the statue as, 
they're going to see it from afar, they kind of go away. The farther you get, the less you're going to see those up close and personal details. So that's, you know, that's what it is. Now, during, during the winter months, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, a, a, a tarp over it and to keep it covered. You don't have to because then, you know, next summer you can just go paint over it again. But I, I kind of just would prefer not to have to keep painting this like all the time. And so just go ahead and keep it covered and then you'll be fine. And then you, the patina will happen less frequently with the water and whatnot, especially if you have it under a porched area. The, with the temperature fluctuations, you'll be a little bit easier. So uh, thank you so much. And thank you for watching my classes and being a part of my, my art journey. And if you have any questions, please write them in the comments. There is a link in the description at the bottom of this video that will take you to my website where I have more in-depth knowledge about painting sculptures and all different kinds of things. We just did a, de a painting denim class yesterday, so there's a lot of fun stuff. Please check it out. And uh, thank you. I will see you on the next fun painting class.